I want to talk about the, the, the most obvious thing to talk about, which is we, we told Rolling Stone um, a couple of months ago that the year you took off to go to school, as part of that, you, you did it because you felt, quote, one-dimensional. What did you mean by that? Well, I mean, we learned guitar at the same time. Once I started kind of writing songs, that was all I, I sort of lost interest in. Or I, I had been curious about other things as a teenager, but I just became very focused solely on music around 15. Right. And ha very happily so. You know, I, I, I wanted to kind of devote, um, devote myself to it. And that was kind of the mode that I was in until 26 or something. Mm -hmm. And then it seemed like time to like it had just been long enough without one thing in mind and I still had a I, I wanted to make another album with the band and I wanted to do this again but I, I I wanted to find another way it seemed like continuing to just sit down on the guitar and write songs wasn't quite the way forward in terms of how to make the music broader or more more interesting to you, us, you, you wanted to serve the music yeah for sure it yeah, was the, it was oh so it wasn't I need to get away from music for a while. It was, I need to uh, widen my horizon so that the music can be better. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Skylar, what was that phone call like? What was that, what was that conversation like? What was that, that cup of coffee like when, when, when Robin told you then? I don't ever think it was a really a specific conversation. I think I could see that it was happening on tour um, just because, I don't know, it started to feel kind of like the well had sort of gone, gone dry in a, in a way. Um, I know the feeling that he's talking about. It's like if you <clears throat> if you have uh, two records and you've been doing it for as long as we had. I mean, you just kind of hit a wall with it sometimes. Uh -huh. Where it's like, you, what would be the next thing that you would want to do if all you've experienced for this long is that? So yeah. I, I could see that, and I could I could definitely relate to that. I mean, I remember on the the last tour sort of plotting out what a different band would be like in, in the off time, just to try to find something, a different experience or whatever. Because um, I knew we were going to at least take a break from the record, the, the band from what we had done. So it wasn't that big of a surprise, and I understood it, but it was never like a, a direct conversation where it was like, hey, man, I got to go do this for a while. But it I'm was sure also the kind of thing where, I mean... Because school was just semester to semester. And the other kind of broader thing is that I find releasing music like this to be kind of stressful, uh, to, be, to release something and then have it judged or to stand behind it and go on tour and you know, talk, to, talk, to, talk to you. Or, it's kind of stressful. Of course it is, yeah. It, it, and um, so it, it, the idea of putting on an album that I thought was like kind of bad was kind of was really scary. Yeah. And I, and the music that I had was working on or the mood I was in, it didn't seem like it was going to amount to much of a yeah. like a good album for a, for a, for a few years. And so school was great because it was just a semester to semester thing. You know, it was like three month, four month chunks, and then I could kind of check back in at the end of you know, see where things were at and continue enrolling. Blah blah blah. You, know. you, you could kind of pay as you go. You could kind of, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And were, were you guys still talking then? Were you guys, well, while you were still in, when you were in Columbia, were you, were you guys still in touch? I wasn't really, I was not really talking to anyone from, from I, I was just kind of in this weird school cave. Right, <laughs> right. But we started talking, like, like, we saw each other in New York and started talking again a couple years ago, I think. I think it was like a good two years where yeah there was definitely a break for sure well, yeah. well then what was that call like like what was that call like Skylar to to get the call from from your friend that maybe this might start again um well I mean it was it was interesting because we had all been doing things separately for so long yeah, you were on tour with another band yeah um so I don't know it wasn't really something that I, I was planning for for sure I remember I was like on tour when I when he first uh, texted me about it, and then we got together in New York and talked over some food. Um, but <clears throat> I don't know; it, it was a big thing because I had been planning on sort of like doing this thing that I had been doing for so long, and kind of knowing when the end of that was going to be, and trying to figure out what was going to happen. So it was actually pretty serendipitous, and that it would time itself like that. But I was definitely excited. 
because it's something that we had been doing for so long, like just from kids and stuff, and it seemed like it needed at least one more go at it. It, n- it never felt complete to me, like where we had left it. So it was definitely exciting, but it was also... Um, I mean, it was a lot to think about because I we had all kind of reestablished these sort of independent things from each other. So it was like trying to figure out how to navigate bringing that thing that was so massive before back into this mm-hmm. new life that we had been living and stuff. And I think it's, I mean, <clears throat> sorry, I missed the call. Oh, sorry, yeah, it's all right. I think it's going to be important for us to kind of maintain that moving forward too. What? Well, just like some degree of like psychological autonomy. Now we're oh, just course, like yeah, no. brainstorming. No, right? no, I'm, 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 I'm enjoying it. I mean, I'll leave. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, think, what, what do you mean by that? It's, it's important to keep psychological autonomy. What does that mean? Well, I think by the end of touring before, because I mean, there, you know, in, in addition to like thinking you need to have a good set of songs to make a good album, obviously everyone else needs to be kind of on the same page or like wanting to do the thing together. Yeah. And, um, so there's a lot of things that need to fall in line to to make an album and devote have like 12 people on the tour devote their you know their their own lives to this for a period of time. It's asking a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And so I think I think by the end of touring Helplessness Blues, we all felt sort of tattooed with the band or something. Or like, and and we and I think everyone needed to kind of rub it off a little bit. <laughs> and then, so I think it's just important that we maintain time for for individual identities as well moving forward from here. Because we, I mean, for the last year since we started recording, you know, it's been pretty full on for 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 the two of us. Yeah, but I, to that. The thing that's interesting about it is that uh, before it was like the band was our lives like 100%. There was nothing else. Like I think for a long time it was like there was no other plan aside from the band. And you were so right. young. I mean most people when right. they make a decision like that to start a band and yeah. and then A, to start a band and then to start a band that they're going to make their job and then they're going to tour right. the world. At least, they, at least they've probably gone through school and they're 21, right. 22, 23. I right. mean, if you start doing something when you're 16, that's going to become – that's that's forma- formative years of identity building. Right. So what would your identity be without the band? Of course. Right. It, make, it makes sense. Well, yeah. But it's it's funny because – since Rob and I have been doing this for so long, like the band has always been a part of our uh, our friendship and our, our sort of like separate lives or whatever. Um, but taking that huge break was like from each other, but also from the the band was important. But I'm really interested in seeing sort of to what you're saying about taking a, having autonomy or whatever. But Rob and I have never really had a chance to be independent. One from each other, but also independent from the band as friends. Really, it's like all our friendship has always been sort of rooted in in when are we going, doing this next tour? When are we doing this? Like, how is this going to work? But I think since we both kind of have had an opportunity now to have separate lives, wanting to be able to maintain a friendship within that, but also have a friendship separate from the band and everything is, is, is really important, which I'm looking forward to. I agree completely. Looking and forward to being your friend. Thanks, bro. <laughs> <clears throat> That's why I think this rock climbing thing is such a good idea. You guys going to do some rock climbing? if we start rock climbing Yeah, together, we've talked about it. You know, then it's a new hobby, a new pursuit for the two of us. Yeah, we're going to start a rock climbing foundation. You know, this is, <laughs> this is the opposite way it normally works, right? Like most, most are just from their buddies and they go rock climbing together and they backpack <laughs> across Europe together and then they come home and say, oh, let's start a band together, you know? Like <laughs> no, normally you don't have to do, do you, you don't have to do it this way. Right. You mentioned helpless, helplessness blues just a moment ago. Um, in that you took the break after that, after that record and uh, there was, there was that, there was that yearning of simplicity in the actual song, the Helpless uh-huh. Blues, you know, if I, right. had, if I had an orchard, I'd work till I'm sore, uh-huh. you know, and, and, and it was, you would wait tables and soon run the store. Sure. And then the, the, the new record, um, the, the first line is, I am all that I need. Mm-hmm. Are we reading too much into something here that the end of the Helplessness Blues was a yearn for a break, for simplicity, for at least you go to university, you know what you're going to do every single day. You're not going to go on tour. You're not going to have to deal with having to talk to people like me. You're going to know what you're going to do. And then, and this record seems to be you, you having found it. Well, no, because there's like the actual writing. Because when I wrote that, like I'm all that I need. When I wrote that intro, for, I did feel that way. You know, mm-hmm. I was trying to be really self-sufficient. Mm-hmm. And but then recording, I didn't feel that way. I, he was in the room. 
you know, the, uh, the engineer was in the room, and mm-hmm. we were. I'm I'm not doing it alone. You I know? Know, I and so I... it then it, and then then it, it was like a little piece of music that became more like a scene. And then let, let's put that scene first. And then um, I don't I didn't I didn't feel that way while recording it. And I don't feel that way now. But but I, I guess what I don't hear is is at the end of Helplessness Blues, I hear doubt. Uh-huh. I hear that maybe there's something greater than what I'm doing right now, and then maybe there's something simpler than what I'm doing right now that will give my life more meaning. And when I, I, when I heard I, I, I am all I need, I didn't think that physically you were all you need. Uh-huh. I, I heard that as, no, I'm, I'm okay now. I don't, I don't yearn for that anymore. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, mm. I guess I, that, that's interesting. I, I guess I intended it to sound like someone trying to convince themselves that they can be self-sufficient when then then the way that I'm delivering it and the register that I'm singing in I'm, I was trying to that would be like the editorial on the actual lyric mm-hmm. because I sound kind of like I'm I sound depressed <laughs> well you think <laughs> you so know? I think and the, yeah for that very intro part for right, that first right. minute of music right but but I think um I think this album ends more hopefully than than the last one did. The last one, there was a lot. Of, the Helpless Blues, there was a lot of doubt. I think I was just, you know, naturally uh, confused at age twenty-four. Yeah, like you would be twenty-five. Yeah, and there's a lot of people listening to you, right? At twenty-four, right? And I, I can't imagine what that's like to have, have have people hang on your every single word. When at twenty-four, I don't, I didn't know what uh, time I goddamn shoelaces. <laughs> that's an, yeah. I mean, that's uh, that was a con- that was part of deciding to go to school is because I. By uh, touring, et cetera, I did feel it, the, I did feel like being on stage every night in front of an audience gives you the, expecta- or gives you that that becomes a consideration when you're writing a song, it, and it makes you think that they're there to, for you possibly when really they're just there because they enjoy the music, you know, um, so I wanted to end up in a place where I while writing the songs for this album where I wasn't thinking about an audience at all that and just for whatever reason mm-hmm. you know, or, or just for the reason that um that was what felt right at yeah. the time yeah can we, can we listen to a track off the record Derek I think you have Fool's Aaron there can we play that Um, Fool's Aaron from Fleet Fox's new record, Crack Up. Do you have a hard time listening to the record? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys, I, I want to put that you guys both turned your, turned your headphones down. Is it, do, you, do you find it hard to listen to it? Um, I, it's still going. Oh, we can, we'll, we'll fade it out. I, I think it is. I mean, especially, th- this is probably different than Robin's answer, but, you know, when you do these things live, and now that we're getting so far on tour and stuff, and you've sort of finessed these things, and things feel a lot more comfortable... Sometimes you hear it and you're like, oh, we should have done this instead or like mm-hmm. whatever. This should have been this way. But it's also, I mean, it's kind of charming. Like just like remember that time when we did this and made this choice or whatever. Yeah. Well, I mean, while we were recording, it was really fun to listen to stuff really loud in the studio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel like once mastering was done, it was, that was kind of the last time I actually listened to the album yeah. was, was uh, when we were in the mastering studio. Yeah. And Plus then there was that time. Oh, then the, yeah. What? Sorry, what? What were you saying? <laughs> and, you, and, you, and, you, and you play it every night. Oh, yeah, and then every night I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, every yeah. night when you play it. By the way, if you're just tuning in, I'm speaking with Robin Pecknold and Scottish Shell Set, members of the critically acclaimed band Flea Foxes, and a, and a favorite band of mine for a very, very long time. Um, Thanks. Did you feel an urge to update the sound of Flea Foxes for 2017? I think the... Um, that was just like I was kind of wanting to, the, to not be thinking too much about an audience, even our audience or the the public at large while writing the songs and recording this album and mm-hmm. going away and being in it being out of the music world helped a lot with that mm-hmm. um i also and creating kind of just an audience of just the people working on it um and if that if that audience was satisfied then that's m- most important um i wasn't thinking too much about how to update the sound or uh, maybe maybe I'm asking the wrong question. W- w- were you thinking about what 
gave you this great success, and not just success in, in financial terms or, or, or success in terms of you know, people, people liking you, but giving deep meaning to a lot of people. And I think we can agree that that's probably a lot of the feedback you got from your early music. Mm-hmm. Was, there, was, was there a tendency to want to go back to that and, and rely on, on that, or did you feel like it could be you in 2017? So, yeah, what, what, I mean, what do you think? For me, like one of the things, especially when at the end of the last record, and this isn't, uh, I, you know, you get people who listen to your music and really like it and they expect something sort of very specific from um, from you, which is like a, a really high expectation. But it, for me, it's like, it's... It, making a record or something is an opportunity to share something with the people that like your music from the beginning. So it's like, if, if, if you have this like sort of relationship with these people who are listening to music, you have an opportunity to be like, if you like the thing that we're doing, thank you. But also like, here's an opportunity for us to introduce you to some other things that are not maybe necessarily the things that you would expect from us. Right. Or like that are things that you would be pulling from. Like a lot of the stuff on our record that we were doing was stuff that it was very, at least my contributions was like stuff that was intentionally supposed to be like, this is not Fleet Foxes. This is something that you, is you this... want to have. You find a place for it in the music that you're doing because it's something that is important to you and you want other people to hear that and be like, why is this like this? Where mm-hmm. does this come from? What is this? How, do I, how can I learn about this? So the, find, trying to find the magic of something that was from those other records is... is uh, I don't. I don't think yeah. that was really a consideration. I mean, well, I think it's it's, and that's part of why this remains pretty fun and pretty fascinating, or at least kind of this difficult um, mental problem while you're working. Because you know, while you're working on an album, I think the first album is a little bit easy because it's kind of the low hanging fruit a little bit, and it's the naivety of youth. Totally, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you also, which your you know your first album. So there's your first ballad, or there's your first like single, or there's you know there's your first closer, or that you know. The, every kind of the mood of every song you, you're getting the, the mood of like a cohesive album you're getting to do your first first ones of that you know and then album three you want to maintain you, then you're working on your third ballad or your third closer and you're like well I can't have the closer or your third single or you know you, and you're like okay how can I make a song that still fits this sp- fills this space on the album but does so in an interesting new way or you know so you ha- you're having to look a little further if you cast a wider net or look a little further afield but I don't think um I also I didn't want to just kind of throw out the the old music entirely you know? do, do, do you still enjoy singing Blue Ridge Mountains do you still enjoy singing Mykonos on stage um, do these are all these are older songs do they still have meaning to you when you perform them I am enjoying them a lot more now than when we were touring them before. Is that so? Yeah. What changed? I don't know. I don't, uh, maybe it's just that, that long break, but uh, they feel, um, and, and then, you know, then the new songs are kind of written, were written to kind of augment the set, you know, so knowing that we would be playing those songs. So the set as a whole feels richer. It's cool to play a new song that has, you know, these ebbs and flows or peaks and valleys and then play something more straightforward from the first album because they, they interact together well, you know. Um, I, I could talk to you for another uh, four hours, but I mean, we, do, we, we do have to wrap soon because you guys have a sound check. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. I do want to ask one question. You, and you intimated uh, at this, or you, you uh, in, implied something at this earlier, and I wanted to circle back to it. God, I hate saying circle back to it. But it's um, when you talked about rock climbing, when you talked about psychological autonomy. <laughs> but Robin, at the end of making two records, taking, taking a six-year break isn't something that a lot of musicians do, especially mm-hmm. at the end of two kind of critically acclaimed records. And, and Scott, I'll say that to you as well. What's the one thing that you've learned going into this album cycle that's different than in the past that will help you get through it, that will make it as enjoyable as it possibly can and maybe make up for some of the issues that you had before? Um, there's always next time. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the one that's I didn't think in those terms before. You felt like you couldn't fail? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I was just so stressed all the time because it was life or death. Everything, you know, every show, every um, everything felt very life or death. And, and, that, and that causes like a constriction that ends up kind of making it die or something. And 
so I think like relinqu- relinquishing some mental control or some like some attempt at um, it has actually I thought I think made the whole experience better to know that it's like paradoxically like taking it a little bit less seriously has made it much more enjoyable and I think actually made the show and the music like more satisfying to us Scott or how about you uh, yeah I mean for me it's like I totally understand what he's saying is that there's always next time thing but I think also because for us like we've both talked about this immensely but like it's it was such an un, uh, it was such an enjoyable experience for the two of us to be recording the record like it was the actual making production yeah, it of was, the record. it was incredibly fun and very fulfilling and very like soothing in this crazy way. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, I'm just looking forward to the opportunity, to, like when we get time to do the next one and and stuff like that. So yeah, same. I'm much thinking much more in terms of um, uh, like experiential enjoyment than like goals, right? Like achieving goals. I don't really think about goals as such anymore in yeah. the way I used to. Guys, again, I could talk to you forever. It's, it's, been, it's been a pleasure to have you in. Thank you so much Thank for having you. us. Thanks so much. Robin Pecknold and uh, Scholar Shellset of the Flea Foxes.